Hey guys, what's up YouTube? Geocentric dude here. Another video of the uh, flat earth. And uh, I want to begin the video by uh, showing you a cool magic trick, right? Magic's always cool. So you see two coins, two coins, one in each hand. And, uh, you know, I kind of wave like that, like that, and then voila, one flat coin. Anyways, uh, there's people out there that know how the trick is done. Nothing on my sleeves, right? And that's kind of what I'm trying to do here help you understand how the tricks and hoaxes and illusions are are done by NASA and uh, all the space agencies RASA with Russia Chinese tried it uh, and once once you catch them lying or their CGI fake composite images of earth well I, you know we've all been indoctrinated since kids one plus one is two and there's a globe in every classroom and you never question everything. Gravity does everything. Gravity is magic, right? Gravity holds trillions of gallons of water <laughs> from falling out of the, and it curves the water and people in Australia are upside down. But so there's, there's just question after question that, but, but yeah, we're the wackos, right? We're the crazy ones. I also want to promote my book, <clears throat> Captivated Audience, Hoaxes, Illusions, and the Biblical Earth. Pretty cool cover, right? Paperback available, um, Amazon, iTunes.com, BarnesandNobles.com, under my pen name, author Ale Alexander Ray. And so I hope you guys read it's 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 a intro introduction to the flat earth it discusses uh topics like genesis antarctica the, the, the fake moon landing 1969 um and on and on and uh i'll probably cover maybe a chapter or passages i quote a lot from different uh authors and of course i give them credit because I'm just uh, researching like Rob Skiba says. Someone's already done this searching and I'm just researching what they've done. Kind of put put everything together in a, in a way that that makes that facilitates it to, for, for people that, that, that have an open mind because obviously that's you're gonna need that. So I want I want to show you something I think is pretty cool that I came up with. Uh, uh, first of all, when I say flat earth, it, that'll be basically the image of a flat plane. It's these white outer boundaries is, is Antarctica. It's, it's ice, an ice wall holds, contains the, the oceans. The sun and the moon <clears throat> rotate clockwise. And, uh, almost like a clock system the Sun doesn't make it as far far enough to melt the ice see it's a intelligent design like like nobody that we know um, and uh, here's another one saying so I was trying to shrink it to do something I wanted to show you and this one just has the equator and the tropics tropic of cancer tropic of capricorn which the sun the moon always stays in the same orbit circuit and then the sun changes its speed obviously when it's in the outer tropic of Cap capricorn it has to speed up then it in the summer and and all the equinox and the solstice it, it changes inner closer crosses the equator than the tropic of uh, cancer cancer around uh, 
the North Pole kind of. This is what I'm talking about. The the dome you see there is uh, the the famous uh, firmament from the Bible. The uh, real map of our home Earth. The Gleason map. And uh, this is what I came up with, right? It's kind of cartoony looking. And this is the dome. So nothing comes in, nothing goes out. And that's our world. And um, I'll be talking more about about flat earth more topics uh this video will include videos um i just wanted to introduce myself um i am the geocentric dude aka alexander ray and i hope you enjoy my videos and please subscribe and comment take it easy on me and uh peace god bless still just like we experience and maybe the sun isn't big but it's very small and very close and not illuminating the earth from 93 million miles but is illuminating locally and maybe everything the sun moon and stars are not far away but are circling overhead relatively close in this video we're going to explore the latter option and at the end we're going to reveal startling evidence through the use of time-lapse photography that the sun cannot possibly be 93 million miles away but is in fact very close and is illuminating locally as it traverses our flat earth oh man and watch how this sun comes at you boom i mean come on and that's all perspective if you look at jet trails google images you'll see them they start out low at the horizon they come up overhead look at that thing they come up overhead and then they go down to the horizon perfectly explains what the sun would do. Here it is going overhead. I love time lapse. And look at this. You can't go out and look at the sun. You can't see this stuff. Except that it's on, you know, time lapse like this. It's incredible. Now watch this thing. It's sweeping. You know, the sun over flat earth is doing a big circle, right? Look at this thing. See it sweeping to the right. It's like a lefty bowler. Just toss that down the alley and there it goes, hooking into the pocket. <laughs> Shut it there. That's exactly how the sun would do on flat earth. Okay, back to the Copernican principle, and this is what they tell us. The sun is 93 million miles away. Now, I'm going to show you evidence through sunsets that shows the sun light following the sun over the horizon, and it shrinks as it goes over. Now, there's no way it would do that if the sun is 93 million miles away. Okay, first I'm going to show you some footage from the ISS. Okay, now watch this animation. Watch this sunset. Now this is exactly, if they came to me and said, do an animation, this is how I would do it. If the sun were 93 million miles away. Just like that. Have the whole horizon fade evenly. But that's not what we see. Okay, wow, look at that. Look how the light lifts off the ground like a big wedge or like lifting up a sheet of paper. That's incredible footage. Definitely the light's following the sun, right? Okay, next I'm going to show you um, 
how uh, a sun that is circling over the Earth, that creates the horizontal aspect of the sun, if you combine that with perspective, which creates the up and down of the sun, the rising and the setting, you get the 23.5 degree tilt that they talk about. It's nothing but perspective and the circling sun. There's another sun sweeping out a big circle. Okay, here's a phenomenon that you might be wondering, how in the heck do you explain this on a flat earth? Well, this footage is taken from Alaska during the summer, and um, the sun does look like it's going up and down. The reason it's doing that is that this town in Alaska is not in the center of the sun's circular circuit. In other words, the sun is making a big circle, and the town is not in the center of that circle. So the sun will be closer and further from the viewer with the camera. That will cause it to go higher and lower and also maybe even bigger and smaller. Look at the, the high altitude airplane. Remember, this is from a high altitude balloon. So that airplane is probably at cruising altitude. Notice how it looks like it's going up from the horizon. That's exactly how the sun will rise because that plane is staying parallel to the ground. And now watch, it'll go down to the other horizon. All right, again, perspective. That's how the sun will set. And forget the big ball. That's just a, due to a GoPro camera. But see how the sun, that's the point of this. And then also, Look at the size of the sun, man. Look at that thing. I mean, there's something to it to say that we're the higher we're higher up our view and the sun looks bigger and it looks like it's not as high in the sky as it does when we're on the ground. Something to that. Let's explore this notion a bit further that the sun looks bigger when filmed from higher up. The next three slides I'm going to do a comparison, a side by side. The one on the left, the camera is above the clouds. The camera on the right is ground level. And the point for the side by side comparison from the ground level and the level above the clouds is that above the clouds we're only maybe a mile or so up and if the sun appears to be closer to the camera well, that means it's probably much closer because if the sun were 93 million miles away, a mile closer wouldn't make any difference at all to its visual appearance.
Okay, here's a little uh, illustrator or a little cartoon from a website called timeanddate.com. It's really funny that they would have a perfect illustration of a sun rising and setting on a flat earth due to perspective. You'll notice that it rises from below the horizon and sets below the horizon. Now you might be saying, well, how is that possible? I can see now you're saying that it rises and lowers due to perspective, but how does it disappear below the horizon? Well, I got a theory about that. Because of the fact that all parallel lines and planes converge at your eye level horizon, this is according to the perspective. I'm not making this up. If in fact, and they do, they converge at your eye level horizon visually, then it makes sense that after that point, they diverge, meaning they then separate. So the sun would continue on a downward track. As you can see from my illustration here, the lines would go to your horizon and then afterwards, they would spread out and separate, kind of like a starburst, and the starburst being at your horizon, at your focal point. Without further ado, we're going to start talking about, and I'm going to start showing you the time lapse of the sunsets that I'm talking about that clearly show the sun is close and illuminating locally. Here we go. All right, and here are a couple of uh, time lapse sunsets. And just like the sunrises at the beginning of this video, where you could see the sun coming at you, not maintaining any 93 million mile distance, here you can also see the sun moving away, and it's uh, clearly not due to the rotation of the Earth and a sun that's maintaining 93 million miles away, but the sun is moving over the Earth and moving away from you. Okay, these next three slides, uh, the sun is almost set already behind the horizon, but watch as the sunlight shrinks and follows the sun. It's definitely a locally illuminating sun, not far away, not very big, and definitely not 93 million miles away. Okay, remember this video from the beginning of the video? I showed you this one and how it's circling over the earth and watch it sweep to the right. 
like a bowler bowling it in there for a strike. Okay, now I want you to pay attention to the way the light follows the sun. The sunlight's going to shrink, right, as it follows the, the locally illuminating sun. Now watch this. See it shrinking, following the sun? You do not get that if the sun is 93 million miles away. The entire horizon should fade evenly, just like this supposed shot taken from space of the Earth. You can clearly see the way they depict it. They depict the demarcation between day and night, or light and dark, as a long straight line. And you can see the long straight line moving as one solid piece. That means that the sunset should all fade, the entire horizon should fade evenly. But that's not what we observe, as we will see and as we've seen in the footage so far. The sunlight shrinks and follows the sun over the horizon. So these time-lapse sunsets are definitely the nail in the coffin for heliocentrism. But this particular one here, shot from above the clouds from this observatory, is the final nail in the coffin. Look at how the sun just shrinks and the light shrinks to nothing. That cannot happen, as I showed you in the uh, when the sun illuminates the entire Earth, which it does from 93 million miles away, it has to. Uh, you don't get this isolated uh, look at the sunlight trailing the sun. That's only possible with a small sun, close, not very high, illuminating locally. I mean, if this isn't proof to you, then you gotta take the blinders off. Ancients viewed their world as a snow globe. It was essentially a flat earth, say a disk, covered by a dome. Uh, and we call this in English a firmament. And in the firmament is where all the stars and the planets were hung. Almost all ancient cultures believed their universe existed in a dome similar to this one. And they never questioned who created it. The ancients assumed that there was a god or gods responsible for the creation and the maintenance of the universe. Beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. The earth was without form and form, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light. There was light. And God saw the light that was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day. And the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. And God said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters around the waters. And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. And God called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. And God said, Let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. And God called the dry land earth, the gathering together of the waters called the seas. God saw that it was good. And God said, Let there be light in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years, 
and let them be for light in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. And God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. In the evening and the morning were the fourth day. And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens, in the firmament of the heavens, in the firmament of the heavens, in the firmament of the heavens. spake Joshua to the Lord in the day when the Amorites before the children of Israel. And he said in the sight of Israel, Son, stand thou still upon Gibeon, and thou moon in the valley of Adjalon. And the sun stood still, and the moon stayed, until the people had avenged themselves upon their enemies. Is not this written in the book of Jasher? Though the sun stood still in the midst of heaven, and hasted not to go down about a whole day, Fear before him all the earth, the world also shall be stable, that it be not moved. The Lord reigneth, he is clothed with majesty, the Lord is clothed with strength, wherewith he hath girded himself. The world also is established, that it cannot be moved. Say among the heathen that the Lord reigneth, the world also shall be established, that it shall not be moved, he shall judge the people righteously. It is he that sitteth upon the circle of the earth, and the inhabitants thereof are as grasshoppers, that stretcheth out the heavens as a curtain, and spreadeth them out as a tent to dwell in.
that God created the universe went largely unchallenged until the Middle Ages, when scientists made a sacrilegious suggestion based on their observations. The sun, not the earth, was at the center of the universe. It was a paradigm shift. There is now another way to explain the naturally occurring phenomena around us, and this is science. Since the Middle Ages, scientists have developed sophisticated new theories about the enormity of the universe and our place in it. Theories that often have no room for God. Many phenomena have appeared mysterious or miraculous or magical. And then through the process of science, we've eventually understood them. Scientists gradually realize that the sun really is just one star among a multitude of stars in a gigantic galaxy having hundreds of billions of such stars. And all this was created in a Big Bang 13.7 billion years ago. But while scientific theories, observations, and experiments tell us where we are in the cosmos, they don't answer the eternal questions. Why we're here, and who, if anyone, created us? So some physicists continue to search for those answers. What they're finding is extraordinary. A remarkable unseen order that may govern the universe. I mean, you probably wouldn't believe this if we didn't show you. Here's out our balcony. It's about 10 o'clock at night. It's almost dark. It's amazing. You can see the moon shining and reflecting brilliantly on the water. But then as you pan to the left, it's actually still daylight over here. And the sunset. Look at that beauty. And it won't ever completely settle over there. It will stay light. Actually, the whole night. But over here, the moon rising up.
Now what I'm going to show you now, we have talked about and many sharp-eyed viewers have known that this was an important thing about this clip for a long time. Here comes the wave. Look at the dark underlined crater in the center of your screen. Watch how it's displaced, almost like you're looking through water. There goes the wave backwards, forwards, the wave hits the crater, displaces. This wave is displacing, as if you are looking through water, the entire image of the moon. Now I've never taken the time to animate this. I have talked about it. There it is zoomed in. Now this is running at 30%, and I'm going to zoom out. There goes the wave to the top, and there's going to be another wave coming in from the bottom. Now I'm going to run this at 30%, so as the wave comes in, you can choose any landmark you want. Here comes the wave from the bottom to the top. Choose any little landmark you can see there, and watch it be displaced. Now that round looking ring crater, forwards, backwards, forwards, backwards, and one more time forward and I'll zoom out and you can watch it go all the way to the top again this is a 30 percent with quite a few filters like find edge and some other things invert now that means a lot that means the entire image of the moon was displaced by this wave pitcher steroid Santa Claus kicks and deals it's a long fly ball going back back and the ball shatters the sky, bringing the ocean itself down into the stadium. Oh, Simpson just broke this dream's reality wide open. Well, since I, uh, I don't know what to trust anymore, I've uh, gone back to this a lot, especially recently. I was uh, born into a Catholic family, and this is actually my mother's Bible, but I, I keep going back to this, this that I, <laughs> a year and a half ago, made fun of to my roommate, and uh, then had to put my foot in my mouth because, uh, I don't know, this could actually be a depiction of our Earth or something similar to it, but as you can see, there are waters above the firmament in this picture, and then it has firmament of the sky, which might allude to some type of liquid up here, maybe, but of course this is an illustration. So I'm using this as my basis for now because I've been pulled back to Christianity in so many different ways in the past uh, few months. Places on the ocean's floor was only just discovered in the 1990s. I might agree as one of a handful of people to ever see it in person. Without a doubt, one of the most amazing things that I had ever seen in the bottom of the ocean. It was while filming for Blue Planet, it was in the Gulf of Mexico. And I noticed there's something out in the distance, couldn't tell exactly what, but it looked like a dark band. And as we approached it, the dark became a donut. I saw this donut that was black in the center. What the heck is that? And so as we get closer and closer to it, I noticed that the black band had what appeared to be kind of steam over it. And then I looked and there was water lapping against the shoreline. This band was a ring of muscle. And inside the ring of muscles was a lake. And it's like, wait a minute, I'm already underwater. And we went out over the water in this lake and tried to descend it and bounced off. It was so super saline and dense that the submarine couldn't go down it. We literally bounced off. And as we bounced off, we sent ripples heading back to the shoreline. It was insane. I've never seen anything like it.
but opinion polls suggest Hillary Clinton is still unpopular with many Americans. And with her rival Bernie Sanders still in the race, can she break the ultimate glass ceiling? This is Inside State. So, I guess I'm up against the highest, hardest stained glass ceiling. And it may be hard to see tonight, but we are all standing under a glass ceiling right now. Yeah. It was fine for all this talk about me running to break the big, hard glass ceiling. And Although we weren't able to shatter that highest, hardest glass ceiling this time, thanks to you, it's got about 18 million cracks in it. What an incredible honor that you have given me. And I can't believe we just put the biggest crack in that glass ceiling yet. Thanks to you and to everyone who's fought so hard to make this possible. This is really your victory. This is really your night. Just moments ago, Hillary Clinton appeared at the... At the convention by breaking the glass, uh, wall? Um, oh, so close to the proper metaphor. Jimmy, let's help her out here. Let's break the glass ceiling. <laughs> I was afraid. I was, I was really afraid it wasn't gonna happen there for a second. Hillary Clinton, this means Hillary Clinton could be could be the first female president in America. Um, you know, I, I think that the world is so complicated, the fewer corners mm. that you can have.
Jesus. And it's not like practice footage or anything. Watch closely. That was basically our arrangement. Our uh, Dan sat in the pilot seat during this operation, uh, sort of monitoring the uh, motion of the vehicle, making sure that it was steady and that the, uh, the you know there were very few uh, vibrations of any sort. This is a picture of the INSAT uh, actually being deployed from the uh, spacecraft. You can see that the, the deploy went very smoothly at the moment of deployment. Did you see it in the background? There was a guy in the background, man. <laughs> I'm not kidding you. You can't deny that that's someone in the background. There is a guy moving in the background. Here, watch it again. Watch it closely. I, I looked up or I tried to look up the size of this rocket. I, I found this picture. You can see it's massive. So if that rocket is in space and if there is a guy in the background in that footage, that means that there are like giants but like insane big giants floating around in space looking at NASA that's pretty that's probably why they don't dare to go back to the moon and why they hide so much stuff space is full of giants well NASA this video was a lot of fun to watch there's a lot of the geocentric dude aka Alexander Ray and I hope you enjoy my videos and please subscribe and comment take it easy on me and uh, peace God bless still just like we experience and maybe the sun isn't big but it's very small and very close and not illuminating the earth from 93 million miles but is illuminating locally that'll be my jingle peace